Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. She says the numbers are going in the wrong direction, are wrong. Governor Whitmer says the state is more than ready to get Michigan seniors vaccinated against the coronavirus. But we'll begin with the siege on the U.S. Capitol. What was once unthinkable, now a harsh reality. 24 hours later, calls growing for President Trump to be removed from office as the FBI hunts down the mob of people who stormed in. There are multiple new developments we're following in this story that's been evolving constantly throughout the day. Yeah, first, there are now calls coming from both sides of the aisle for President Trump to be removed from office. That comes as Facebook has disabled the president's accounts through at least the inauguration. And at the Capitol, an investigation into this history-making security breach is just getting started. We've got all the angles covered. Let's start things off in Washington with Alice Barr. Alice. Devin and Kimberly, President Trump's days in the White House are limited, but right now his power is not, leading to a sudden and serious effort to try to push him out of office early. Growing pressure today to hold President Trump accountable for urging on his supporters before an angry mob stormed the Capitol and then not condemning them afterwards. Top Democratic leaders calling for Vice President Mike Pence to assume the Oval Office under the 25th Amendment. I joined the Senate Democratic leader in calling on the vice president to remove this president by immediately invoking the 25th Amendment. Even some Republicans now say President Trump should not be allowed to wield the powers of the presidency in his final 13 days in office. The president is unfit and the president is unwell. Early this morning, President Trump finally committed to an orderly transition of power through a tweet from a White House aide, Twitter having frozen the president's account and Facebook locking him out indefinitely. The statement came minutes after Congress finished counting the electoral votes, affirming President-elect Joe Biden's victory. Biden today squarely blaming President Trump for the chaos at the Capitol. Our president is not above the law. Justice serves the people. It doesn't protect the powerful. Several Trump administration officials resigning in protest to the president's handling of the crisis, including Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao, wife of Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, and Special Envoy to Northern Ireland Mick Mulvaney. But I can't stay here, I, I, not after yesterday. Former Attorney General William Barr accused the president of, quote, orchestrating a mob to pressure Congress, calling it a betrayal. With Inauguration Day now less than two weeks away, there are new concerns about how to safeguard the ceremony and the peaceful transfer of power. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. All right, Alice, from the turmoil uh, in Washington, we head uh, to the U.S. Capitol now, where police and the FBI are working to track down the people who stormed the building yesterday. And that comes as a seven-foot-tall fence has now been put up in hopes of securing it. Jay Gray is in Washington tonight with more. Hi, Jay. Hey there, good evening, Devin. Good evening, Kimberly. No doubt you can hear the music right now. That's from crowds that are still gathering, though they're pushed back a bit, not nearly as dense. Look, you can feel the tension after yesterday's riot, but there's also frustration. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi late this afternoon demanding that the chief of the Capitol Police be fired after the violence here. Barricades, police and the National Guard surrounding the Capitol. The entire D.C. National Guard has been mobilized. We have also received the support from the state of Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, and New York. A show of force that for many is a day too late. This was a massive security failure and questions need to be raised immediately about why there wasn't better preparation for what was not an unanticipated event. Many of those questions aimed directly at Capitol Police. This viral video showing officers seemingly moving barricades, allowing the mob to rush in. Me, hey. The force was clearly undermanned and overwhelmed. In a written statement, the chief of the USCP says the riot was unlike anything he's seen in 30 years of law enforcement and calls his officers heroes. 24 hours later, the images are still shocking, overwhelming. The pictures also now evidence posted by authorities as part of a massive multi-agency investigation into the violent attack. 
we still have a significant amount of work ahead of us to identify and hold each and every one of the violent mob accountable for their actions. Actions that before were unthinkable. Actions that have forever changed our nation. Now, the first federal charges since the riot have been filed this evening. One of those, a weapons charge. At least 68 people have been arrested so far, but only one of those suspects is from the D.C. area. In Washington, Jay Gray, Local 4. Okay, Jay, and we've learned people from Michigan are among some of those arrested in Washington last night. And they're facing everything from gun charges to curfew violations. We bring in defender Sean Lay, who's been looking into these charges. Let's find out what he's uncovered so far. Sean. Also new tonight, Devin and Kimberly, the U.S. attorney from here in eastern Michigan, Matthew Schneider, is calling on you at home. If you're carefully watching what happened at the Capitol yesterday and you recognize anyone from Michigan smashing and grabbing their way through, they want to hear from you. Here's the latest. A 29-year-old man from Cadillac was arrested in D.C. for serious gun crimes. Metro police tell us the Michigan man was caught carrying a pistol without a license and possession of unregistered ammunition and large-capacity ammunition feeding device. A 44-year-old man from Redford was arrested for a curfew violation. His voicemail says he works for a Metro Detroit window company. A 44-year-old man from Commerce Township was also arrested for a curfew violation along with a 29-year-old man from Columbus, Michigan and a person from Grand Rapids. Plus, a 64-year-old Michigan man was charged with unlawful entry. There were also many from Metro Detroit who went to the rally in D.C. but did not enter the Capitol. Donalyn Atkinson and her brother Don, a Desert Storm veteran, they snapped photos of people headed towards the Capitol. I actually saw the two guys that breached the Capitol. They were right in front of me. These guys had walkie-talkies. I heard them squawking and I'm thinking, they're allowed to communicate. How did they know that they could communicate that they needed walkie talkies? Valerie and Jimmy Lively from Waterford took their two boys, 12 and nine years old, to see the president. They returned to their hotel only to see this unfold on TV. By the time we got to Virginia and seeing on the news that all hell was breaking loose basically, it was very disheartening and shocking. I went down there for the historical fact. As far as the violence, we could have went without all of that. In fact, Valerie and Jimmy tell me that the mood suddenly changed as that rally was ending. They didn't like some of the things they were hearing. They grabbed their voice, started the process of coming back here to Waterford. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4, back to you. All right, Sean. Now, tonight, Michigan members of Congress are sharing what they've been going through over this, uh, for many of them, surreal and for others, terrifying 24 hours. And after all that transpired yesterday, they still went back to work last night and got the job done. Grant Herms has been speaking with the Michigan delegation today. He joins us live with more. Uh, Grant, they've, they've got to be exhausted. They absolutely are. Many of these members of Congress working on little to no sleep today, and now they are telling us their stories. They broke the glass. Members of Congress continue to reel from the insurrection on the Capitol. Stories of fear, chaos, and at times bravery as rioters broke their way into the House and Senate. Some of my colleagues, uh, most of them were former veterans of Belzezinga, was one of them, were taking benches and try to help secure the chamber. Today, after the breach, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell reflecting. I'm still in my office, haven't been to bed, and started seeing the clips at 4.30 or 5. I, I, I realized that we had a there were mobs that really didn't care if they hurt people or damaged people. But, you know, I, I love my country. At one point during the chaos, Representative Haley Stevens saying the rioting reminding her of how she felt on 9-11. It was more so, Grant, um, a recognition to the fluidity as well to the situation, but the resolve that I have to standing up uh, for the, the oath that I took. On the Senate side, Senator Debbie Stabenow helped lead staffers to safety. It was all of the senators. It was everybody uh, in the Senate as well as staff. Um, I was worried there was a lot of young staff that were very upset. And so I was trying to just 
stay focused on what we were supposed to be doing, following law enforcement and, and sort of helping them. In a statement today, Republican Representative Tim Wahlberg, one of the three to object to the election results from Michigan, saying in a statement he was sickened by the violence. It is not what we stand for as Americans, he wrote. Every lawbreaker should be held fully accountable for their abhorrent actions. And in that same statement, Wahlberg continued to give credence to the kind of false beliefs that the election was stolen or somehow fraudulent. Those are not true. We reach out to Wahlberg's office today to see if the representative feels any sort of responsibility for helping to further that narrative, but did not get a comment back. Now, coming up at 6 o'clock, we'll hear from more members of Congress from here in Michigan about what they think should happen next to the president and some of their own colleagues. Back to you. Yeah. All right, Grant. Now, less than 24 hours after that Capitol siege, Michigan's Capitol building was temporarily closed because of a threat. State police say someone called in a bomb threat to the Capitol's facilities control office in Lansing early this morning. Building was checked, deemed safe, and staff was allowed back in after nine. And our coverage of the riot at the Capitol and the fallout from it continue over this next 90 minutes of news ahead of 530. Why some are calling yesterday's tragedy a clear cut example of white privilege in America. Then at six, you'll hear from a journalist and Metro Detroit native who was on the ground yesterday in Washington covering all of it. Let's move now to today's coronavirus numbers in the state reporting 4,015 new cases over the past 24 hours, along with that Another 176 Michiganders have lost their lives to the virus over that time period. That includes 138 from a review of vital records. We're also getting an update on vaccine distribution all across the state. As of today, more than 725,000 doses of the vaccine have been delivered to Michigan with nearly 175,000 shots going into people's arms. Tonight, Governor Whitmer is hitting back at claims Michigan is among the worst states in the country at getting the coronavirus vaccine to people. That's happening as the state prepares to move into a new phase, vaccinating people age 65 and older. Jason Colthorpe with more on a, a pivotal step here, Jason. It really is, Devin, but the governor reiterated today they're up to the challenge. As the state gets ready to open up vaccinations to people 65 and older on Monday, the governor's advice to those waiting is be patient and prepare. So you should go online right now, check in with your local public health department, um, check on the DHHS website, watch it, and when it opens for enrollment, make sure that you get signed up. This is, we're building systems as we are deploying vaccines. It's, we're gonna have some bumps in the road, but we're trying to move as fast as we can because the more shots in arms, the quicker we eradicate COVID-19. Keep an eye on your email as well. Your hospital might actually reach out to you. Now, Michigan has been criticized for a slow vaccine rollout, which has been attributed to numbers gathered by the Centers for Disease Control. The CDC website is, it's crap, unfortunately. I hate to put it, be so blunt, but it's just wrong. The governor conveying her clear frustration with the CDC, which first listed Michigan 43rd in the nation for initial vaccines given, but now shows it's 11th. Whether we're in the top 10 or, or somewhere else, I know that Michigan is um, moving very swiftly. We're improving our times every single day, and I am confident that we are ready to take on more vaccines. Now, despite the number of vaccines you just reported that have been delivered to Michigan, we're hearing from the tri-counties, the executives saying it's not enough. We'll dig into that coming up tonight at 11. For now, reporting live, Jason Coulter, Local 4. See you then. All right, Jason. The company that took over Art Van Stores in Metro Detroit less than a year ago has filed for bankruptcy. Loves Furniture filed for Chapter 11 yesterday. The company reopened 17 Art Van locations in Metro Detroit last year, months after Art Van filed for bankruptcy. Uh, Loves recently announced it was closing some stores. The company is hoping to keep 12 locations open in Michigan and find a new owner for those stores. Hard to believe. All right, well, what a, what a day it's been after a crazy one yesterday, right? That's right. We are off and running here on a very busy Thursday. Let's check in with Ben. Kim and Devin, wasn't much, but we did see a little bit of sunshine. Still have some breaks in the clouds. We'll see if we can carry that forward to tomorrow and the weekend. Coming up. Wondering where your stimulus money is? Well, you are not alone. We are learning about a new possible glitch that could cause a big delay. I have important information coming up in my Help Me Hank report. All right, Hank, but first, a tragic update after an eight-year-old girl is shot in Southfield. That and, I should note, we are also expecting, uh, we are told, uh, an announcement update coming up 
from the White House. We will keep an eye on that as Local 4 News at 5 continues.